Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode in the Vehicular Terror Movie Review Series. This week's film is the 2020 Russell Crowe movie, uh, Unhinged, directed by Derek Ort. Uh, I did not know too much about this. This was one of the movies featured in Dr. Gangrene's uh, Wheels of Terror series that he did last October, where he did uh, 31 days of films that have a, uh, a vehicular element to them, be they uh, motorcycle or car or truck-oriented horror or terror or suspense films. And, uh, you know, he gave it a pretty good review. He, he wasn't doing, like, backflips about it, but he g gave it a pretty good review, and I became very interested in it. And uh, I'll tell you what, this film really surprised me. I thought this was a darn good movie. Um, very solid. Let's get into it. Uh, this film uh, obviously stars Academy Award winner Russell Crowe. Uh, he is as old as he is now, of course, and he certainly has packed on a few extra pounds. I'm not sure if that was his state of being at the time or his, uh, he put it on the weight on for the movie, but he plays very much a regular guy who is very much down on his luck and having a bad day and uh, we learn up front he's not a very nice guy uh, his character reminds me somewhat of the Michael Douglas character from falling down whereas during that it, you know during the course of that film you learn that the wife has a restraining order against him and all these things in this film you see him commit a horrific violent act right in the beginning I did not have a problem with that choice of plot uh, that they established that in the beginning you do learn a little bit more about him as he goes as the film goes on, uh, about the problems he's having in his personal life and at work. Uh, but he is driving a, a large uh, pickup truck. And basically, after we are introduced to him in the uh, beginning of the film, oh, by the way, it's early in the morning, it's like 4 a.m. when he commits this very violent act. Uh, We're then uh, treated to some opening credits, which is basically a montage that sadly could be pretty much made at any given week or month uh, from the news about people essentially committing acts of uh, of road rage primarily. So you kind of know where we're heading and then we're introduced to a young mother played by uh, Karen Pistorius uh, who was very good, wasn't really familiar with her or perhaps it's Pistorius and she's a young mother with a son um, she's got other family members living with her and she uh, begins to uh, get her son ready for work. She wakes up late. We've seen this kind of scenario time and time again. Everything's rushed. On the way to work, she gets a phone call from her boss, who pretty much is fed up with her being late. So she is in a, in a very bad mental state. Oh, also, she's dealing with uh, an, a soon-to-be ex-husband, okay? So she's dealing with him. And trying to kind of shield her son from what's going on with that. She's getting phone calls and messages. And eventually she's able to drop him off at school. Actually, I'm sorry. But before that, uh, <laughs> they're running late. The son is like, oh, you shouldn't take that exit. Well, it turns out she makes a wrong choice. And now she's going to be late to uh, drop him off and then get to work. And um, lo and behold, she pulls right up behind the Russell Crowe character driving his, his large black pickup truck and he is distracted uh, and she lays on the horn and you know kind of yells at him as she drives by well eventually he catches up to her and perhaps you've seen this in the trailer where he pulls up not all the way up he pulls about three quarters of the way up the length of her car tells her son to roll down the window and starts a conversation with her son about uh, hey uh, did you ever give a uh, you ever hear of a courtesy tap? You know, a, a little light tap on the horn. It's, it's a friendly little tap instead of uh, laying on the horn. And uh, I'm sure that's what your mom meant to do. And, you know, she probably should just ex just go on from there and apologize, but she can't help herself. She has to snap at him again. And her son, by the way, is frantically trying to roll up the window. She He can't roll it up. So, eventually, uh, she's able to drop him off at school. And, um, you know, she's, she's been also talking to a friend of hers who's a divorce lawyer. So they're going to meet and sort of 
talk about what a horrible day she's had and uh, talk about the, the divorce uh, proceedings. Well, what do you think happens? He eventually begins to sort of stalk her and chase her and threaten her. She pulls into a gas station to get help and it, she's not sure, but she has to like plead her case to the to the cashier and some people kind of step up to help out. And there's several moments in this film where you see, you know, people do things. You know, this guy comes out, he's standing behind one of these uh, cylindrical concrete uh, barriers at the gas pumps. And he's like telling the guy, yo, bro, you know, you need to move on. You know, we don't want any trouble here, bud. You know, then he makes the mistake of stepping in front of the vehicle. Well, what do you think happens? I mean, the movie is called Unhinged after all. Uh, and I'm not going to go into that much more of the plot. It's basically like a cat and mouse. She's trying to uh, stay ahead of him. And the, the catch is that in this film, uh, he very early on uh, gets a hold of her cell phone. So, and you know, I was thinking a lot of these films, whether it's like Duel from the 70s or even the original Hitcher, you know, the plots are so much different because of the technology. Back then you had to pull over, get into a, find a phone booth or, you know, go into a gas station and use a phone and try to call the police. Well, now you've got, that's at your fingertips, which is good. But then again, the flip side is all of your information's on there. And not only that, even since from the time of the orig the uh, remake of The Hitcher in 2007, so much has changed. There are other electronic devices at work that figure into the plot in this film, too. And so, you know, you could also track people. So <laughs> if you've got a psychopath chasing you and he can track you, this is, this is not a good thing. Um, and I was surprised. This movie hits pretty hard. I mean, he finds out very quickly. Uh, he, he basically blackmails her and puts people that she cares about at risk. And there's some really horrific things threatened and consequences. Some of some happen and maybe some don't. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, eventually, uh, the son gets back involved and there's some, some threats to the son that are very disturbing and there's some physical confrontations. And I mean, he's just, he, he just throws people around. He's just like a lot bigger than, than the people that he's after. Um, and this is, this was a very, very solid film. Uh, you know, uh, was it, you know, perhaps, certainly, I think more believable than I, you know, in the remake of The Hitcher, I was talking about how it almost has a, he's, he, he, he's on the brink of being like a supernatural character, The Hitcher, the original one and the remake. Whereas this one, you know, she tries to get the police involved. The police are trying to help, but, you know, there's only so much they, they can do. They can't be everywhere at once. He is kind of one step ahead of them. Uh, but all of those interactions I found to be kind of believable. Uh, and uh, I, I was very satisfied with the with the conclusion. Uh, this was a darn good movie. Basically, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it, was, it really grabbed me, the whole thing. Um, I watched some of the special features. You know, they, they basically took... Uh, they gave Russell Crowe like a like a powder blue shirt, and as the the film goes on, you know he gets like sweatier and it gets grimier and there's some bloodshed, so he gets some blood on it and it's like untucked and it's just as the you could see his deterioration and how he becomes well unhinged throughout the movie. It was really it was a good good touch. You know they didn't want to go with the obvious white shirt. They obviously didn't want to go with a dark color because they wanted the blood and everything to to sort of be able to pop, if you will. Um, yeah, it was a well-made film. I'm, uh, Derek Bort, or perhaps Borte, uh, you know, he's, he's certainly one to watch. Um, I'm going to be checking out some of his other films and, uh, I'm eager to see what he comes up with next. Highly recommend this. Uh, I believe I got this from, uh, you'll have to go back to my, one of my halls, Oldies or Hamilton for, and it wasn't very expensive. So I do recommend this film.